I wanna move on to Saudi Arabia because that is probably one of the main areas where I personally have the most critique or criticism toward the yeah. Biden administration. You know, recently Senator Bernie Sanders wanted to revive a resolution yeah. that was vetoed. It was a bipartisan resolution that was vetoed by Donald Trump. And it essentially pulled US support toward the Saudi led coalition in Yemen. When Donald Trump vetoed it, there was a lot of backlash from Democratic voters, you know, liberal news outlets and all of that. But when Senator Sanders wanted to revive it and it was squashed by the Biden administration, there was very little criticism right. from the very same people. What really, ha I don't know if you're privy to it, but what, what was going on behind the scenes? And why do you think the Biden administration wanted to squash that resolution? Well, I think there's a few things. One is, you know, the situation has changed to to some extent. I don't think it's changed enough. I mean, uh, Stephen and I talk about this in the piece. I mean, certainly the Biden administration. I mean, as a candidate, Joe Biden supported the War Powers Resolution that Senator Sanders and his colleagues uh, passed in in, in 2019. Um, early on in this administration, uh, President Biden came out and announced an end to the quote offensive support. Uh, for the Saudis in Yemen, although they would continue defensive support. We never fully got an explanation of what that really meant. But still, I mean, the situation has been improved. Has it been improved enough? I don't think so. Um, Senator Sanders clearly does not think so. Um, you know, one thing I would also note is that the, the Biden administration also created the Office of Special Envoy for Yemen. Tim, Le Tim Lender King, you know, a, a skilled State Department diplomat whose job is to reach a diplomatic end uh, to this conflict. Um, so I would just note the situation has changed a, a bit, not enough in my view. Um, but I would also kind of draw it back and look at the broader US Saudi relationship. Yemen is obviously hugely important, it's one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world. But I think the question of the US Saudi relationship is an area where I think I, I have been very disappointed mm -hmm. um, in, in, in the way the Biden administration has, has acted. I mean, Bi President Biden as a candidate said, you know, I will make him a quote pariah. Uh, because of the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Um, they started off, they released the US intelligence report indicating that Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, clearly was implicated in this murder. Um, but since then, they've slowly but surely uh, moved back to the norm, which is a very close relationship and, and very few, if any, consequences um, for Saudi's uh, behavior abroad or its repressive behavior at home. And I think this is a real failure. Um, of the Biden administration. You know, on what I mean, I agree with you wholeheartedly, but at the same time, you know, one of the factors that's really pushing the Biden administration in the direction it's been going in when it comes to Saudi Arabia is that we're at the mercy of the OPEC plus cartel mm. when it comes to oil production. And Saudi yeah. Arabia is clearly in that group. Uh, we're reliant on them in producing a certain amount of oil uh, in order to keep gas prices down, energy costs down. You know, I have mentioned the possibility, I mean, this would never happen, at least not anytime soon in the United States. But the idea of nationalizing natural gas, oil, you know, <laughs> the resources we have right now, it's in under the yeah. control of these multinational corporations who sell to the highest bidder on the international yeah. market. Yeah. Would that be a in your mind, a potential yeah. solution to kind of, in the short term, wean us off of our reliance on you know the international oil market. I mean, I think you know, dealing with you know, as you know, energy is a global market. Um, so even if we are not, you know, the the the, the kind of the uh, shorthand version of the U.S. Saudi relationship has always been like we give them security, they give us oil. I think that's simplistic, but it does get to a basic truth of the relationship. Um, you know, I think an approach here, and this goes to a, a bill um, that Senator Sanders introduced uh, last year in the wake of the Ukraine. Uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, along with Congresswoman Cory Bush and Congressman Jason Crow, um, the US Energy Independence Act. And what this proposed was that the Biden administration use its executive authorities to, to seriously ramp up uh, green renewable energy. 
Mm -hmm. um, because ultimately, I think that is the way to wean us off of this dependence um, of not only of fossil fuels, but to make us less dependent on the whims of authoritarian corrupt rulers like Vladimir Putin and Mohammed bin Salman, as, as Senator Sanders said in the statement, you know, it is, you know, we that we need to get out of this cycle where we go hat in hand to our corrupt authoritarian allies to help us against our corrupt authoritarian enemies. Um, because that's the cycle we continue to be caught in as long as we are dependent on these fossil fuels. Totally agree with you on that. I mean, it was kind of stunning to see the Biden administration go to Venezuela <laughs> and engage in some pretty, you know, diplomatic talks in order to work with yeah. them. With you know, and that's something and that's, they should have done anyway. I agree. I, I agree. That, but yes, but that was after. Right. Biden got elected and said Juan right. Guaido was the rightful leader of Venezuela, even though he was never elected. Right. That was crazy. But anyway, all right, final question for you. We're running out of time, unfortunately. I wanted to ask about your your views on China. So in the piece, you write, quote, Biden has repeatedly said that he does not seek a Cold War with China, but his policy repeatedly tells a different story. His repeated gaffes on Taiwan, vowing to send US troops if China attacks, may have made war more, uh, may have made war more rather than less likely. So that's the area where I definitely agree with you. I think the gaffes are pretty disastrous. And what adds to it is members of Congress, people like former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi traveling to Taiwan and kind of adding to the tensions. Yeah. What's really behind it? Because honestly, my view is we allowed for US based companies to exploit cheap labor That's in right. China. China has started kicking our ass economically, and now US officials are like, oh, China's the yeah. enemy. <laughs> No, that's that's absolutely right. And again, I would refer to a piece that that Senator Sanders wrote in Foreign Affairs, and I think it was April 2021, where he made this point. He was like, 20 years ago, the absolute unassailable consensus was that we are going to let China into the WTO, and they'll, you know, companies will go to China, and the Chinese people will will get rich, and then obviously they will become much more politically liberal. Now that obviously has not worked out. But 20 years later, 22 years later, the new unassailable consensus is that China is our enemy, and we must do everything we can to compete and 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 you know repress China's economy, um, lest they replace us as the, the 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 rightful global hegemon. And maybe we should just hit the brakes. Um, and question this consensus just as we should have more energetically uh, questioned the previous consensus. I mean, I think the point that Stephen and I tried to make is it is good that President Biden says these things about not seeking a Cold War, about seeking areas of cooperation, because this is absolutely essential. Um, we cannot address shared global challenges like climate, like pandemic, just to name two obvious examples uh, without at least trying to cooperate with China. And yet the the story that his policy is telling, whether it's, you know, the a couple a few months ago there was a series, a set of restrictions announced on the semicon semiconductor industry that are extremely severe that essentially seem to be trying to crush um, the Chinese semiconductor industry. Now there is a, a security logic behind this, mm -hmm. um, but th the tracks that are being laid down right now um, point us toward a future of real um, severe competition, if not conflict with China. And the fact of the matter is China is going to be there. We need to find some way of coexisting. And in saying this, I do not downplay or diminish um, the real problems that China poses both you know, globally and internally. I mean, what China is doing in Xinjiang to the Uyghurs is absolutely atrocious. There is no question on um, the repression of its own people around the country, obviously a huge problem. Um, but again, uh, we need to you know, we need to find ways to keep talking and identifying possible areas um, of, of cooperation and not just put ourselves on a track of conflict. Yeah, I, I really appreciate your dialectical approach to foreign policy. I think it's really important, especially at a time when people tend to report on these things in a very black and white way. You're either on one side or the other. And honestly, with these issues and as complex as they are, it's not that easy. It's not that cut and dry. Uh, Matt Dust, thank you so much for being so generous with your time and joining us today. Everyone, please check out the piece that he co authored, uh, A Better Biden Doctrine, which is featured in uh, New Republic. Thank you again, Matt.
Thank you, Anna, great to be here. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.